Today we're looking at lead code 90. It's called subsets two. The solution for this is very similar to subsets one. So if you haven't seen subsets one, highly recommend watching that because we're just gonna be building off a solution that is very similar um, to, the, to the subsets one. So here we're given an array of nums that contains duplicates. We wanna return all possible subsets, the power set. The solution must not contain duplicate subsets and we want to return the solution in any order. So the idea behind this is, is that we have one, two, two, and we don't want any duplicates. Okay, so what we'll do is let's go ahead and draw out the tree, and then we'll look at uh, a template that we can use, a backtracking template that we can apply to this problem. That we're, we're going to be applying this same backtracking template to any problems that are dealing with permutations, subsets, combinations, any of those, uh, we're going to be using this backtracking template. and uh, this is just another instance of where we can use this template and it just kind of reinforces how powerful it is to solve a lot of these problems when we have some sort of template that we can just apply it to. Okay, so we also want to make sure what's going on underneath the template so we can really understand what's, uh, what, we're, what we're doing and what the code is doing. And then also, Typically, you know, you're not going to get a problem that is word for word. So understanding the template, then you can easily make modifications depending on what the constraints are uh, with the question that you're being asked. Okay, so subsets two. Here we have uh, a number one one two, and what we're going to do here is we're going to have a, we're going to have a recursive tree, and on each recursive function call, we're going to either exclude whatever the value is at i or include it, and we're going to have a slate. Uh, variable here. Once we get down to the leaf level, the bottom of the tree, we're going to go make a copy of that that value, whatever's in the slate, and push it into a result, into a global result. Okay, let me just go ahead and put that here. We will have a global result that we're going to push whatever is at the leaf level of the tree. Okay, so let's just kind of step through this to see um, how this works. So here i is at 1. And we're going to have two branches. We're going to exclude i on the slate. And we're going to include i on the slate. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to increment i. Whoops. Let me uh, just make a copy of this so that way I can grab this variable. Okay. We'll just put that there and then let me just erase this out here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take i and we're gonna increment it one over here to this two, okay? And now we're just gonna exclude and include on this level of the tree. So we're going to go ahead and exclude that two on our slate and then we're gonna include that two on our slate. Same thing over here, we're gonna exclude that uh, two and then we're going to include it. We're going to push it onto the slate. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and increment this i one more. And same thing, we're just going to go ahead and exclude that uh, 2. It's 2 again. And then here we'll include it. Same thing, we'll exclude it. And then we'll include it. will exclude. This may seem monotonous, but it's good practice to really understand what's going on uh, under the hood of, of, of this recursive tree here. Okay, so we exclude and then we include. Okay, so now this does get all of our subsets. The problem with this is that you can see we have duplicates. We have a duplicate there that's matching that uh, and we have a duplicate here that's matching that right now what we could do is we could solve this down the recursive case the issue is is that we're going to deviate a little bit further from the pattern and overall it's not going to really improve our time or space complexity we're just going to add one more scan so i feel the the easiest way to kind of do this because it'll fit into our template is once we get this, push all these values into the result and then just filter out the duplicates. That's a, re that's a n space and n time operation and um, it reduces the complexity of, of the code much more and you're much less prone to errors just doing that. 
And if you try to solve it where um, you're gonna go ahead and you know not go down a specific path that's been duplicated, you can do it that way, but it adds a lot more complexity to the code and it doesn't really get you any better performance, worst case at least. So let's talk about performance on this. What is our performance? Well, worst case, we don't have any duplicates. Like we have one, two, three. So at every level of the tree, here we have one, here we have two, here we have four, and here we have um, eight, right? So you can see that it's two to the n. Okay, so on time, we're doing um, O of two to the n. And then not only that, we have to do another n operation at every single leaf level. In worst case, it'll be the size of the input. So we can say that uh, worst case is gonna be two to the n times n on time. Okay, and then on space, what are we looking at on space? Well, we're gonna have to, again, worst case, we don't have any duplicates, so we're gonna have to push a scan of all of these uh, leaf level values into this result array here. We're gonna have one, two, and so forth. And so that is gonna be um, two to the n, okay? And then we also have to take into account the height of the tree, which is gonna be n, okay? So here we can also say this is gonna be two to the n times n on space as well. Okay, I did move kind of through this very quickly. So if you're not clear, I recommend watching this video again or check out subsets one. I go a little more in depth on how this works, but um, you can see how if you have this pattern or if you have this template, you can just kind of plug and play and solve a lot of these very quickly. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create our global result. Okay, and we'll go ahead and set this to uh, an empty array. And then we're gonna have our depth first search recursive helper. Okay, and we'll go have an I, we'll have our nums, and then a slate. Okay, and now we wanna have our base case. So we wanna just check if I equals nums.length. We just wanna take whatever's in the slate and scan it and push it into our result. And we'll do uh, dot slice as our method there, and then we'll just return out of there. We also wanna sort our nums, <clears throat> because um, if we have repeats, we wanna make sure they're, they're next to each other, so we just also want to, in the beginning, just go ahead and sort nums. And this is just the JavaScript way of sorting. Okay, so that will sort it in place at the beginning. Okay, so we have our base case and then we want our depth first search recursive case. And here we just want to um, exclude. Okay, so that'll be the left tree. And we're just gonna do depth first search, i plus one nums and our slate. And then we wanna do an include case which we'll do depth for, or we'll add onto the slate. And then we'll recursively call um, our helper. And then we just wanna pop off the slate. Okay, I'm moving through this very quickly because I've, I've explained this in depth on subsets one. Um, and I just, the reason I wanted to add this to the video list is just show you how using this template here, you can just solve many different variations of this. It becomes very easy. So um, again, what we're doing here is as we're moving down the recursive call stack, we're popping off the slate as we go back up and then we go back down and we add uh, different values on where I is at. 
Okay, so once we have that code, um, then what we want to do is go ahead and call depth first. Well, yeah, we want to call depth first search, so that'll populate our result. Set i to zero. We'll have nums, and then we'll set slate to an empty array. And now what we want to do is we just want to filter out all the duplicates in the result. And the easiest way to do that is just use a hash. Okay, so we just set a JavaScript object as a hash. Let me just go ahead and create some extra space down here. And then we'll iterate over our result. So for let element of result, and then if hash at element is true, we just continue. Else, we just set hash at element to element. And now all we have to do is just get the values out of our hash. So we can just return object.values hash. OK. And so let's go ahead and run that. And we're good. OK, and we made great time. And we didn't do too bad on space. The thing is, is that worst case, by doing this hash method, it's just adding an extra uh, linear operation on time and space. So, you know, worst case, we're already at two to the n times n. So adding just one extra scan on each one of those is not going to make that much of a difference. And that's why I feel it's much easier approaching this problem just using the hashing method. Now, you could try to try to figure out how to exclude it um, um, in, in, in at this part of the code here. You're going to want to take account of how many duplicates there are and then kind of figure out how many uh, recursive calls you want to make based on that. But I feel that adds a lot more complexity and it's not really worth um, the, the, optim like the space and time optimization that we would gain from it. So that's why I didn't include it in this. But you can see how using this template is very powerful. If you looked at subsets once, it's almost identical code. All we did was add this constraint right there by pulling out the duplicates and we were able to solve this. Um, and you can see that it's free, well actually this one's not as frequently asked, but I think subsets one is a lot asked a lot more. So good one to know either way. Okay, so that is lead code number 90, subsets two. I hope everyone enjoyed it and I will see you all on the next one.